Hey guys. So I am coming to you from my little back porch and I just had this message that I just felt, well actually I just wanted to have a conversation. I want to talk about minimizing the to-do list and actually this has been on my heart so much. I don't know how many of you have felt overwhelmed. Like I, there's this sense of overwhelm, like what do I need to do? Especially if you are in marketplace ministry or business. I feel like, you know, when the Lord has called you to do something very clearly, a lot of times there's this battle to accomplish. And then of course, you know, you want to have, you know, a great plan and all these great ideas but implementing them is impossible. And so I just want to tell you how this has played out. When we were younger, when we would go to the ice cream shop, it would be like, okay, vanilla chocolate, like even right now, like the internet's going in and out, vanilla chocolate or strawberry. And then all of a sudden I remember as a kid going there and being like, oh my gosh, there's like a million flavors. I feel like we're living in a time where there's just way too many flavors. It's like we have so many options, so many options. And this message specifically is for people in marketplace ministry. And I am in network marketing. I love what I do. God has given me the charge to help create 100 orphan loving millionaires in an area of wellness. So if you are somebody like that, please reach out to me because we are on a roll and we are getting there in time. But I have to tell you something. Planning every day, like what to do, is difficult because there's so many options. Okay, I hope you're following me. There's so many options. It's like, okay, this is what your Instagram plan should be. And just as, in, as leaders, you know, we get ideas, but we're always trying to think of a better idea, right? So I'm sitting here. I, I came outside because I decided to put my phone aside and start working um, with basically just a pen and paper, writing things down, putting my phone aside. And I'm realizing that... I have just been in the state of overwhelm. So here's what I want to mention to all of you guys. When you are working in your business, regardless of whether it's real estate, whether it's network marketing, remember that we are living in a time where there's so much information overload and so many options, like the 36 flavors at Baskin Robbins. I don't know, is it 32 or 36? <laughs> There's so many options that sometimes it can feel overwhelming. I actually do this to my kids. I say, okay, do you want to go to this place? Do you want to go to that place? Like my son this morning was saying to me, stop giving me so many options. And I feel one really great piece of advice for any of you out there who are trying to plan your day, trying to plan your business, would be to minimize the options. Consider, I think when we listen to coaches coaching us, we consider all of those, you know, as we have to do that. We have to do that. We have to have our Instagram set up. We have to have Facebook set up perfectly. We have to do Facebook Live. We have to do this. We have to have a schedule. We have to plan things on a Sunday night so that during the week we have to have our calendar filled. We have to do this. We have to do that. There's so much striving that we lose the relational aspect of one-on-one -on -one and the value of what minimizing things could be. So my advice to you guys is to maybe start looking at all the options. This is what I'm going to be doing. Because God tells us, you know, um, I'm just gonna read a couple of scriptures. He says, do not wear yourself out to get rich. Have the wisdom to show restraint. And that's in Proverbs 23, by the way. So don't wear yourself out. It's like when you're working so hard that you're not really, like you're feeling overwhelmed and you're not enjoying it, you're not exhibiting restraint. And I feel like the restraint is, what is your plan? Keep it simple. And, and when your mind, because this is a battle of the mind, says, oh, I need to do more of that. I need to do more of that. And people are telling you, we go to the conferences and they're like, oh, you should do this. You need to do that. Are you doing that? Oh, that's why. That's why. That's why you're not successful. That's why it's not happening because you're not doing this. And in the process of us trying to figure it out, which is great because there is a process um, in, you know, trying to find what works for us, it can feel also overwhelming because we are trying a bunch of stuff. But the truth is, is that sometimes it's paring things down, eliminating things in our own mind. We have been told for years that we can do everything, that we get to do everything. As women, especially, we, we're multitaskers. We, we, we brag about that, right? But the thing is, is that I believe that so many people are feeling a high level of anxiety 
because of this ADD, because of the options. Excuse me, I'm not trying to use that. I'm not minimizing actually the 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 importance of that phrase attention deficit disorder because I feel like actually the truth is, is that we many of us are developing it because of so many options right so if we can just manage our own minds and say to ourselves look what we need to do you know there are a bunch of options but it's not that you have to do everything you don't have to be the one calling 10 people 10 times a day you don't have to like come up with a system that's really small and really simple. I'm starting um, a group that I call the Royal Awakening, which is to help people with my, that are in Christian ministry and business, marketplace ministry, with mindset, um, developing influence, and then also with being able to have a growth in the movement, meaning like a great community or whatever. And so just even coming up with that, those ideas has been hard for me because there's so much to do. There's so much on my to-do list. So the one thing that I want to say to you guys is just breathe, get outside, shift, make prayer your priority. Realize that what honors God is your inner relationship, your relationships with other people, connecting with other people. He is the, the avenue to success. Focus on him and give yourself a break. My gosh, it's like, I'm looking at this, I'm like, how many hashtag clouds can I create and put in there? Because, you know, if I was really good at Instagram, I'd have a bunch of them. Let's see, now that YouTube has the ability for me to post and do stories, I can do stories on Instagram, Facebook, by the way, on two of my accounts. And if I wanna be really smart on Instagram, I'll, I'll optimize five different accounts for Facebook Lives. By the way, I'm writing a book. By the way, I'm running a, a multi-million dollar uh, business with my Adoptogenics team through my awesome network marketing company. Slow down and just take a breath and do one thing at a time. So I'm going to be reading some more scripture. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. And that's the other thing. It's like, are you doing the will of your company, the will of the people around you, the expectation of people that think, well, you were supposed to be a doctor, you're supposed to be a singer, or are you doing the will of God? Are you doing what God is calling you to do? Typically, the will of God means that he is calling you to minister to other people. So are we, are you, are you, are you postponing what you were supposed to do for him, which is really to soak him in Move through your day as the Holy Spirit guides you, which honestly can look very disorganized. Or are you supposed to do all those things that everybody tells you to do? So that's in 1 John 2.17. And here's the one. This is this scripture right here is so simple, but it's really important for so many for to hear. This is 1 Peter 5.7. Please, I have to read this a lot. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So... What I've been doing, I've just been reading Jeremiah 33, 3, and I say, Lord, I am calling unto you to show me great and unsearchable things that I did not know. And I'm saying, please just make this simple for me and just bless me with the ability to keep things easy, with ease, and without complicated things. Other people's expectations are irrelevant to what your expectations are and plans for my life. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to just keep things simple. Let me have the attitude, Lord, that living the living life with my only three choices being vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate, that that is more than enough if I have you. <laughs> Let me understand, Lord, that sometimes what I consider overwhelming can be accomplished in an hour. Sometimes, Lord, what I consider overwhelming can be thrown in the garbage. I don't need to do it. And Lord, I'm just asking you right now to just bless everybody who is looking on this um, on this call and on this um, live that I'm doing here, this video, to understand that sometimes when you feel overwhelmed, the best thing to do is just stop and praise Him and get an answer that way. We are just really here to serve Him, His purposes first. All of the, you should, I'm so tired of people shooting me. 
There's a lot of bullshitters out there. Excuse my language, but, and I've done it too. People ask me all the time, what should I do? What should I do? I can give people a system, but, you know, they really need to implement it for themselves. So, um, let me see. You know, there's the story of Martha and Mary, too. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened up her home to him. This is really good. I love this. Okay. So she had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all of the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by herself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better. This is just, whew, and it will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 38, 41. Are you willing to sit at the feet of Jesus? Or are you so concerned about preparing for a million things and managing your life, managing your business, that you're not even sitting at the feet of Jesus? And so I just want to bless you guys. That was just my word today. I just feel like there's an overwhelm. Sometimes on Monday it's like, and I am feeling overwhelmed. I could, I could use some prayer. I mean, I'm pressing into it too, but I, I do, I am grateful that simply just taking a notebook outside, I left my phone inside there for a while. Of course I came out to get it, to talk to you. There's a little bit of irony there, but the Lord spoke to me and he said, the key to your success is really eliminating the unnecessary processes and just focusing on the simple systems. The question is, what is the simple system for you? So that's what I'm asking the Lord to open up for in order for me to build my business. I am, you know, calling upon the nations where we are. We're in 18 different countries for strong Christian leaders to step forward who are looking for an income producing, or I, I call it, I say that I inspire um, in income increase in people who are in those countries that want to join business with me, but for them to step forward, like how is it the best way for me to reach them and talk to them about business and how it works in ministry and, and you know, even finding them. So that's my big question and the ultimate goal um, for the business, but the ultimate goal for the Lord is that finances come into the kingdom and that's what he's gifted me to do so that these people will have an outlet in order to fulfill their ministry without being over overly reliant on you know individual funding not that there's anything wrong with that but that they will have a stream coming in of their own while they're being blessed by other people as well so the more the kingdom of god has the finances the more um the kingdom of God is really able to express itself fully and honestly take dominion on this place. So that's what God has called me to do um, through this health and wellness company that I work with. Uh, I'm doing it in a unique way, but for the, there's always that battle. And so it's like, how do I get the people to come? And it's been a struggle and we're in a dry season. And so we're praying and we could use the prayer to just have increase and have the simple systems um, my answer to this honestly has been praying every single morning for my business really hard and for the, for the, um, laborers, the ones who are, you know, the harvest is here and the workers are few, few, but we're calling in, we're, we're calling upon the host of the, 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 yeah, the host of the harvest, like the, the commander of the harvest, God himself to pull in the laborers, you know. And so that, at the end of the day, is all we need to do is pray. But as we're sitting here feeling overwhelmed, eliminate the unnecessary stuff. So anyhow, that's my word for, for, the, for the day. Be blessed. Focus on, on, on him first. And then you will see the increase happen. So minimize the process. Many blessings. Um, please feel free to... Uh, follow my page here. And then also, if you are interested in joining our Royal Awakening group, there's a tab on the side. I will probably put the tab in here for you to join. I will be building that in the next couple of weeks. Another thing that's on my list, I do feel like the Lord is calling me to do that one. 
and uh, be blessed. Bye.